All right, so thanks everyone for um, coming to this talk. Um, I mean, you don't have a choice either, right? <laughs> so yeah, um, this is actually an updated version of my talk I gave like six months ago at uh, NG Vikings in Finland about the new hot stuff in Angular 6 and 7. So um, yeah, I had to update uh, a couple of um, like news. So bef but before we, we start, can you remember what, when was the release date of Angular 2, version 2? Who knows the, the release date? Yes. Sorry? September, yeah. 14 September, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was the original tweet, by the way. So since then, like, two years um, have passed, and we had a lot of new features for V5 and V... Um, V4 and V5. So this talk is about the major upcoming features, like some of them, not all of them, uh, obviously, but uh, most of them. So yeah, this 2018, this year, would be an exciting year for Angular, and I'm pretty sure I will give the same talk next year. I will just change the date. <laughs> so yeah, my name is Wasim Shegam. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Mani Kineko. I am uh, leading the open source program office at Sphere in Paris, in Paris. and I'm also uh, a GDE for the Angular team, so I'm advocating for the Angular team, and also GDE for a couple of other teams at Google, and I basically do a lot of open source. Um, yeah, I'm author of a couple of Angular applications, um, some of them like cross layers or X layers, Angular Run, which is a uh, UI for the CLI. Uh, it's just Angular, which is a Twitter bot, so you can talk with it right now. Um, yeah, some of these apps actually are still under like development. So if you want to contribute to your first open source projects, please like ping me on Twitter. There is lots of issues to fix <laughs> and new features to implement. And if you want to meet outside, like talk about any of our, these uh, technologies, please feel free, like today or even after on Twitter. All right. So today we are going to cover um, some of the major uh, features are coming to um, the upcoming versions of Angular. So it started with V6 um, a couple of months ago. And um, things are coming to V7 and V8. So we're going to cover the new build system, uh, which is based uh, upon Bazel, which is a new build tool. We will talk about schematics, even if you see, I mean, you saw some of them uh, in the previous talks. The CDK, the, comp the component dev kit from the material team, and also the uh, DOM observable uh, proposal from Ben. Um, and we will finish with a couple of news about Angular Elements and IV. Build like Google, or try to. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Bazel is actually an open source project by Google, um, which is uh, based on an internal tool at Google, which is called Blaze, which uh, Google have been using for more, more than a decade now. So it's really powerful tool for building like super extra mega large applications. And uh, the benefit, some of the benefits actually of, of Bazel are like its, it's speed. Uh, I mean, it's a full incremental build system, and also uh, it it's, it is able to like distribute and um, run your execution onto like different uh, remote machines. And it's also scalable, so you can use it for obviously monorepos. That's what Google. Yeah, that's what Google um, have been doing uh, since like 10 years now. And also you can use it with TypeScript, Java, like many, many languages and on different uh, operating systems. And yeah, uh, now the Angular team, I mean, a couple of months ago, have, they, they have switched to, like moved actually to Bazel. So now Angular is built with Bazel, if you can check the repo, the GitHub repos, but also, uh, some of the other projects like NGRX, um, Material, CLI, are also like switching to Bazel, like using Bazel, instead of like shell scripts. 
which are pretty cool, by the way. So the roadmap for Bazel <coughs> is pretty simple. So basically, uh, the Angular team is like is wanting us to use Bazel to build our large applications. But for now, there's a couple of things, a couple of features that need to be implemented into Bazel. For instance, like trying to package Angular uh, libraries with, uh, with Bazel. Uh, have things like uh, code splitting and lazy, like being able to la lazy load the Angular models. And of course, like the most coolest thing is get it to work with the CLI so we can use it in our everyday project. So if you want, if you're, if you're interested or if you want to know more, there is this short link, um, which is basically a Google Doc made by um, one of the Angular uh, team members. And it's really a high detailed um, description about the project. The project is called ABC, by the way. Next, schematics. So I guess all of you are using Angular CLI. Raise your hands. More, 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 please, more. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, like 80%, that's, that's pretty cool. So yeah, we obviously all use the Angular, the Angular CLI to like generate scaffold and have our app like up and ready, built, tested, and uh, deployed. And all of this has been possible thanks to the, like, the inner commands provided by the CLI, which they allow you to generate, test, build, lint, all that stuff. So these commands um, are now using what is called the schematics, which, are basically, um, which is basically a plugin system for the Angular CLI. But the good stuff about this is that by default, you get like the generate command, the test, the uh, serve. But you can also like, extend those commands or completely replace them. Or you can also create your new, um, new schematics. For instance, uh, like if you're working for a company and you have like internal style guides that you need to be need to be impl I mean implement, so you can create your own schematics and then generate your components with everything like pre-configured. From the Angular team, we had a couple of uh, new schematics. So the ng update one. Um, I don't know if you heard about it, which is available. Um, uh, starting from Angular CLI v6, which basically will update your Angular project, I mean your Angular dependencies, um, just with one simple command. We also have the ng-add, uh, which Yuri mentioned briefly earlier. Uh, yeah, or, or ng-magic, as he mentioned. Basically just um, like require a package, for instance, um, Angular slash poire, and then you will get this Angular slash Pua package from NPM, get it installed on your uh, project, pre-configure everything, and then you will have um, an Angular progressive web app application without needing to reconfigure anything. So if you want to read more about schematics, uh, Hans from the Angular uh, core team has written a uh, really great tutorial on the Angular blog. Did I mention that the schematics are open, like, like open, like in open source? So that means that you, all of you, all of us can build our own schematics. So please do, like start from tomorrow, not maybe not after tomorrow, uh, start building your schematics and distribute them to, um, to NPM. I don't know what happens. Okay, so imagine, all right, it's coming. <laughs> I need to go fast, maybe. <laughs> so because of this, because the schematics are open, I started this RFC on the Angular CLI uh, repo with basically a proposal uh, in order to have a, um, some sort of a market like where we can search easily for schematics. So I made this prototype, imagine ng schematics command, and then you can like, out, like find for like any schematics, hit enter, and then both installed and configured with like six, like two seconds. So this is still a prototype. It's not um, working fully, but if you if you are curious about this, please 
like Go comments on the issue on GitHub. Next, we have uh, component dev kit. So I guess all of you are using Material or Bootstrap. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so the Angular uh, the Angular team, I mean uh, they they provide actually a set of uh, UI components based on the Material Design specs by, by Google. So you get lots of uh, lots of widgets, UI widgets. Um, but if you want to make your own widgets, I mean, it's really difficult to customize these ones. I mean, you shouldn't actually be customizing because these are implementing the um, official material design spec. But if you want to build your own, it's really hard. So that's why the Angular Material team is um, that provides a set of component dev kits, which are basically component without any UI, without any style, only the behavior, the, the logic. And um, <clears throat> the ones in black are already available. So for instance, if you want to implement a stepper like today, you can use the, the, the API of the stepper and provide your own CSS on top of it. And next, drag and drop trees are coming as well. I think trees actually already is uh, like, um, public. Jeremy from the materials, material team has, again, write a blog about this. Please, uh, please uh, read it. Next, uh, this is actually not a new feature in Angular, but it's kind of related because it has some, it has some benefit from, from, for the Angular community. But again, Tracy mentioned this uh, briefly this morning, but I'm going to add an extra layer on it. <laughs> um, so who uses RJS or Streams or this is a tricky question. I mean, all of you should raise your hands because we are all Angular developers. Um, so even if now you are not using streams and observables with RxJS, you are using it under Angular, like forms, HTTP, and all of these APIs. But basically, like, um, <clears throat> streams and observables are everywhere. And they also um, there's a proposal, as Tracy mentioned, uh, by Ben Lesh which I'm not going to talk about it because I, you will have to go and like start it and give your feedback directly on the comments. But basically, what, um, what, the, what, what the, like the pro proposal says is to have the streams, like the observable API, baked in the browser directly. So with this, we will have like a unified uh, libraries. So for instance, ArcGIS, Cycle, Bacon, I don't know, like any. <laughs> implementation of observables. Um, we will have like unified version of all of these. And also, this means like fewer polyfills. So for instance, like ArcJS is kind of a polyfill for uh, also for, uh, for observ the observables. And then like fewer polyfills means also like less code that is going to be shipped to the browser. And like, hence, your application should load faster. Maybe, maybe. So imagine having all these operators like out of the box directly into the DOM. I mean, just write map filter reduce and smoosh. Just kidding. Sorry, Ben. Um, so basically, what the proposal is saying is, for instance, we could like uh, query an image or like an element, DOM element. For instance, here is an image with an ID call the unload on method load, and then boom, you subscribe and you have a stream. That would really will, will be fantastic, actually. Anyways, um, if you are excited about this, or even not, <laughs> please go check this, uh, this issue on GitHub. And also, uh, like if you know other people from other communities, like React, Vue, or other, um, other developers, please talk to them, show them the issue, and like, uh, let the team know your feedback. All right. Is it okay so far? I'm not going talking too fast. All right. Next uh, topic: Angular, Angular elements. <coughs> so thanks to uh, Sherry and Anna, they gave a really a great example of how, um, like, Angular elements is so so uh, exciting. But basically, Angular elements 
is like uh, built in your components and uh, using them as custom elements. And custom elements are actually is actually an API like from the web component specification. So <clears throat> most of the browsers today have implemented this API. I mean the V1 version at least. And Angular elements, again, as I said, write your components in Angular and distribute them in custom elements. So the end goal of this is to be able to use your Angular components or Angular micro applications inside any other technology. React, Vue, whatever, JavaScript, jQuery, what you want. Because it's, like, it's, it's standard, it's custom elements only. I have a question for you. So I have this cheeseburger recipe. Um, can you spot the Angular element? There is one element which is an Angular element. I will give you five seconds. Actually, I have time. I give you two minutes. No, I'm just kidding. All right, you can't. You can't because from the inside, yeah, like we are using Angular to implement our components, but from the outside, it's a custom element. Like, from the browser perspective, it's just an element, a DOM element. As a developer, we don't need to care about how, um, like, what is the implementation detail of this custom element. Just use it. And simply, like, how to use it, like, register as custom elements, like an array of component, components, and then boost up your app. But again, Cherry um, and Anna gave a really great example of this. And this is the to talk by Rob. Um, this is actually the original talk, so I highly recommend like uh, checking it out on YouTube. The roadmap, like the current roadmap of Angular Elements, is it's stable. Like they reached the stable release, um, but within Angular. I mean, you can create Angular elements and use them within an Angular application. Use, like using them outside of Angular is not ready yet. I mean, you could do it, but at your own risk, because as I will mention, uh, the IV renderer is not ready yet, and this feature depends on um, like the progress of IV. But basically, this will like, come really soon, so please uh, stay tuned. Now, IV. I think it's the last topic. So, um, yeah. If you've been following along the Angular story, we had like so many, I mean, three renderers. Um, so this one, I mean, this one actually, I think this is the fourth one, yeah. Yeah, the IV is four, actually. <clears throat> so basically, IV is a new renderer for Angular. But again, uh, like, us as, a develop, as developers, we won't notice any change because it's in like uh, implementation detail is in the hidden uh, unless you read the source code. But the goals of Ivy are um, like having smaller size of our uh, Angular, Angular apps, um, like smaller bundle size, actually, I should say. And also, um, if you're having, like, if you had like so many errors in your Angular apps, every day, I mean, <laughs> we are developers, it's kind of hard like to understand what kind of error, like just to read the stack trace and everything, unless like you write your own um, error handler. But with Ivy, the promise with Ivy is we're gonna have like a simpler debugging information and error messages. And with Ivy also uh, is going to enable um, <clears throat> a faster compilation. Um, like Angular 5 or maybe V6 is pretty fast, but imagine even faster <laughs> compilation. So let's 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 wait for it. And one of the actually most important thing, like again for us developers, is non-breaking changes. We want uh, like the team doesn't want to uh, release a new renderer that would break all the existing APIs. They want to use the same APIs. At the same time, like provide new features and new performance, like improve their performance. So, <clears throat> again, um, the Hello World is already done. 
Um, now there's like going through the roadmap, like having a, a, an API compatible uh, interfaces, a small uh, other stuff, and making sure that IV produces a like really smaller uh, bundle sizes. Um, like in, in, actually, in order to understand this, you need to understand AOT compilation, which is a different topic, like one hour conference talk. Uh, probably you need to check my other talk about this. But yeah, uh, with IV, we should have like smaller uh, generated like output JavaScript and TypeScript uh, actually code. And also, when it's this done, when this is done, uh, the Angular team needs to validate this new implementation internally at Google by other like, teams at Google who are using Angular. And then we have the public release, and probably have IV ready for V8. Um, I just want to highlight this V8 because I got lots of questions on Twitter because people like they they were thinking that IV would be ready for V7, which is like there was no public announcement by the Angular team about this. <clears throat> so they told me to mention this like publicly. No, not not probably not V8. Now at least um, IV won't be ready for V7. Uh, anyways, so is it is it is it clear? Okay, perfect. All right. So new fa like faster uh, build system coming to the uh, Angular ecosystem using Bazel. Um, schematics, which are already available in V7, but uh, there is no bad. You can use them actually starting up from today. Um, <clears throat> Also, if you're using this, I mean, even actually if you're not using the uh, material components, you could still use the CDK and build your own um, components. For instance, I'm just throwing this. We can imagine like NGX bootstrap dropping all the behaviors, the custom behaviors, and using CDK instead. Sorry, you probably could cut this and video. <laughs> Um, yeah, observables, please go check the uh, issue on GitHub. And also, custom elements, uh, this is really a hot, fe hot feature in Angular. And more, more probably, like the most interesting um, new thing coming this year to Angular is IV. Because this is, like, this will actually reduce, like, really, really uh, our applications and, um, enable us to have Angular elements everywhere and then like be, um, I would say this, like more inclusive, like use Angular with other, with other, with other technologies. Um, V6.1 is already out. I guess all of you have upgraded your applications, right? Great, cool. Uh, just kidding. And uh, like since last, I can't remember, last, this week maybe, uh, Angular V7 Beta 1, probably, they should probably rename it to Alpha because there's only like a couple of comics. So it's not ready for production yet, obviously, but you could still like get, uh, get into the source code and see what's, what's happening and what's coming next in V7. Actually, reading the code, so in code source on GitHub is a real, I mean, it's a great experience. I highly recommend like every night go with like 30 minutes, let's read some comics. Thank you so much for listening to me.